Okay, box number two on the passenger side. And uh, this is a bunch of uh, parts and components and tools. And I do have a first aid kit that I put together in here too. Unfortunately, uh, I haven't had to use it really too much as of yet. So, yeah, um, so starting up, up at the top, um, got a couple uh, blankets there, which as most of you guys know, it's an OSHA requirement. Then that's, there's that first aid kit. Um, that's one of the things I'd kind of like to show it. it, it I, I put quite a lot of time, money into it, and uh, it's an important thing. I didn't, I wouldn't have never really been all that happy with ones that you can buy that I can afford that didn't really seem all that practical. So, uh, well, maybe we'll do another one down the road on that. And uh, um, yeah, so this is my electrical uh, kind of go box, and there's a lot of stuff in there. I think I'd kind of like to. Uh, pull that apart. <laughs> I don't know how much you guys are interested in this, but there's a lot of stuff in that I can grab that, go into a cab or an engine compartment if I need to, and and uh, it generally kind of cures what I, what ails it. Um, so I'll come back to that. And I want to come back to this box here because elect the electrical systems on this new equipment, um, they're really the the heart and soul of the equipment, as you know, you guys know. Again, I'm no mechanic, so I, electricity is is definitely kind of a a uh, to a certain extent a mystery. I know what I know, and uh, the rest of it I'm learning as I go along. So there's a lot of tools and uh, you know uh, testers and stuff in this that I've put together over the years, and so I think maybe I'll do something on electrical, um, and we'll pull that out. Um, this is. Uh, uh, what I call a brush box for the chainsaw um, has a bunch of uh, kind of day-to-day uh, <coughs> -day tools that you need. Uh, Spencer tape in there, small container of uh, mixing oil files. I, I file my own saw, so. but uh, <coughs> don't use that much anymore. But I certainly have um, this. I want to show you guys. I'm, I'm real happy with these. I've always wanted to build a set of these, and I had an old set of uh, welding cables, so I, I went ahead on it. Anderson power poles there. Those things are the, are the bomb. And uh, I've got the truck set up. So I've got 50 feet of lead there set up with the power pole connectors. And uh, um, then I, so I can plug that into the truck. Um, and then I've got these set up so I can go, I can run to the standard connectors. Um, I ran a 12 volt um lead off a single battery in the tiger cat it's got a 24 volt lead as well but i don't have anything to jump it with it's 24 volt so um so with that i can run off the truck and into that power pole on the buncher if you need it um, that does have a lot of electronics and if the batteries get older um, they can run down just because the uh the modules, drawn juice. So I'm really happy with them. I can't remember the name of it. I'll try to look these up. These are American uh, uh, clamps. And I'll tell you what, man, those things get it done. They're solid copper and they're heavy duty. Um, I'm really happy with them. And uh, if this thing can't, if these can't jump up, it can't be done. It's, it's, I'm happy to finally have them. So. Yeah, um, spill kit, that's redundant. Um, I've got one in the machine as well. Again, that's a requirement on a lot of these tree farms. Haven't had to use it, but got one here and one in the buncher. Another uh, green tarp, um, that's a new one um, for lying in the mud. So yeah, top shelf. And uh, like I said, we'll re revisit some of the stuff. Um, come back to you know, the electrical and uh, also the first aid kit. So yeah, second shelf. Um, this is a Milwaukee vacuum cleaner. A lot of you guys are probably familiar with them. Again, it's a Milwaukee tool, and that is so cool. Um, it really works well. It's self-contained. It's rugged. Um, it does the job. I try to clean the cab, the buncher, pretty regularly, especially in the summer. Um, you know, because it gets dusty and uh, 
you know, one of the worst things for electrical stuff is dust. Um, and uh, if you keep it clean, um, it's just good for the systems. And again, you know, these machines are so heavily dependent on electronics that uh, I think it's pretty important. So that's a good thing. I, I, I definitely recommend them. And uh, so I've got uh, three torque wrenches here, uh, the CDI. Um, and uh, actually, this outfit, CDI, um, they manufacture the torque wrenches for um, Snap-on. And uh, I've been really happy with them. You know, I've got a Proto three-quarter and a half um, a, and two three-eighths. And I'm actually looking for a smaller one. CDI has one that's, uh, I think it goes from 10 to 50 um, inch pounds, or is it foot pounds? Inch pounds, I'm not sure, but, but these are all kind of big. I ran into some nuts or some bolts on the water pump that were asking for 21 pounds, and I had to fudge it. I wasn't all that happy with it. But uh, CDI, these are snap-on. Some things you can't skimp on. I think torque wrenches are one of them. Um, I want to give a shout-out here to um, Off-Road Wrench um, down south there. He's got a good channel, and I saw... Um, one of his that he did, hell of an off-road mechanic, good guy. Um, and he would talk about, I think it was like five five tools that he recommended that, you know, you had to have. And he, he mentioned torque wrenches. I wholeheartedly support that. You know, it's once you get used to using them, it's really the way to go. You know, it's like it makes your fasteners last longer. And uh, I've broken my fair share um, by over torquing or whatnot. So... I use these a lot, and that's, that was his recommendation. So I'll, I'll, we'll put a link on there because it's got, he's got a good channel. And uh, so uh, a couple meters, um, you, you got to have these. Um, this is a fluke. Uh, it goes on my uh, meter. It's a clamp, super handy for uh, seeing if you've uh, got an output, <laughs> what you got for an output on an alternator. It can take that amperage. And this is one of these uh, Harbor Freight boxes. Again, you know, it's um, a spendy tool, and you, know, you want to take good care of it. Um, and then this one, this uh, is my venerable fluke. Now, this is a Pelican case that I bought used off Craigslist. Yeah, so it's an 87.5. Um, I think I got this on eBay. Um, it is super handy. I've actually got down in my manuals, you'll see there's a there's a booklet um, that I copied, uh, or I had my wife copy off the internet for me in paper. And, uh, you know, these do so much. And for me, you know, I don't know a whole lot about all the specifics. So with that book and this meter, you can really troubleshoot, you know, the, the systems really well. A bunch of leads and stuff here. Most of them came with it when I bought it used. Um, but I've added some to it as well. So these flute cases are great for stuff like this. You know, it's a spendy meter and uh, you want it to stay clean and dry. So. And I've got uh, at their CB gear. I think there's an extra mic in there. Um, some connectors. Got some uh, antenna hardware. Um, I run a lot of other machines too. Like in the summer, we'll do. You know, we do. We have a couple road building sides, and so in the summertime, sometimes I'll you know be on um, pushing spurs and whatnot. And I find I work on other machines more than the Tiger Cat. You know, bless its heart, I don't work on that thing much. It's such an awesome machine. But CBs are always getting torn off. Um, so I got some of that there. And then these are these. Uh, <coughs> um, Boxes again here from uh, I think they're Planos. Uh, you got them at Walmart. They're really cheap. I have a lot of fuses. As you know, you guys that have these 550s probably know this. It was a surprise to me. There are five different kinds of fuses in two fuse boxes on this truck. And some of these, I mean, I didn't even know these what these things were. You know, um, so that's these you know micro minis and. Uh, um, you know, relays, connectors, red, blue, yellow. Most of them are 
uh, the shrink type. Um, but you got to have shrink shrink tube, and there there that is, all the favorite sizes. I have a collection of big lugs there, um, like battery style or heavy cable. Um, I uh, I got some crimping tools that'll handle that. And, uh, put those in there. Um, uh, here, so more fuses, you know, <laughs> these FMM, FMX, I mean, you know, <laughs> this Ford has those. Um, these are the Weatherhead uh, style connectors. I really like these. I've used them on, on some projects and uh, I've got the crimping tools for them and whatnot. Those are really nice. You can rebuild them, um, change the configuration around. I get, get that stuff from this outfit here in, in my clock and this Lars Co. They, they've got a good collection of them. And then these are kind of just standard uh, standard fuses, the large and small. Um, got a couple other kind of oddballs in there as well, but uh, that's what those are. And again, I, I just try to keep things organized and um, close at hand, you know, so I know where they are and uh, I can grab them because it doesn't seem like anything breaks down when it's handy. So. Yeah, so then uh, dropping down to this uh, lower shelf, um, you know, again, I, you know, um, the stuff I'm doing is basically kind of maintenance, you know, with um, the Tiger Cat. Um, I'm looking to keep that as a philosophy. I'd, I'd love to keep it looking like uh, and running like the way it was when it first got delivered. You know, obviously that's not, not going to happen. But so my selection of like hardware is really, it's not as comprehensive as a, as a you know, true mechanic would have, but it's pretty good. Um, I like these little boxes. I put these little um, rings on it just to, or rings so I can pull them out. And uh, this is caps and plugs. I just um, just wanted to show you kind of how that little shelf works. I thought it came out pretty good. I built this out of plywood. I had thick around. JIC and ORS. I mean, these things um, super important. You know, I love to. Uh, catch something as a weep and not a leak. But if you, you know, if you do have a, a, a serious leak or you need to pull hoses to get to one hose, you know, you can cap them off, not make a mess in your machine, save oil. It's just, it's a good thing. So pretty comprehensive selection. I got some plugs too. Those help on if you pull a cylinder and you want to pull the fittings off. Yeah, a lot of those I've had for years. So then, uh, nuts and bolts, I think I go up to uh, maybe five eighths on that. Um, those are standard, and I run down to maybe a quarter, I think. And then metric. I think I've already ranted about metric and standard on the sh same machine. But uh, yeah, pretty good selection, you know, some oddballs. Um, this is an old box I had, this uh, sheet. Um, sheet metal screws, some odd connectors and whatnot. I like to save shit, like let's say uh, um, a ring around an ignition key on the Tiger Cat. Um, it's actually kind of a weak link. I think they've up upgraded that. Um, and back in there is, again, small nuts and bolts, tiny ones, um, you know, some oddballs in there. It's always nice to have something, you know, if you work on something, you drop a tiny part, you know, or you get buggered up or it just something's missing. It's it's so nice to have what you need in the brush and get her back up and get back to cutting. So, and I've been happy with that. It, it rides well. And, uh, yeah, so i uh, got a flag and sign. My wife's out there. My wife does a lot of flagging for me, and she does my summertime fire watch too. So that's good for lo loading and unloading too. If you're on the highway, you got to drop down, so have somebody watch the traffic. And another box here. This is uh, um, this is a little right in the rains. I, I do a daily log on that on the machine production and what I've done and stuff. It's a Scribner book. It, uh, 
that's pretty pretty good thing to have for us. You gotta know what uh, go, is going into a log safety observation, so we can write up a forester if we catch them in the in the wrong. And there's an AOL book there too there. And uh, then uh, um, these are manuals here, and those are all. These three here are all. Um, I uh, got these copied off the uh, internet for the the, the um, maintainer body itself. Really, very very well done. Again, you know this this built body is built to last, so you can rebuild it and order parts. And they're great people back there, and I think they're Iowa. Um, that's an inclinometer book there, <laughs> Sunto. You know, again, I'm kind of a dummy, so uh, it helps, you know, for some of that stuff to be able to read it and uh, make sure you don't run in it right. Fluke book, and uh, and uh, that's a company handbook there. So, yeah, I, you know, this kind of stuff's really important. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's nice to have it stay clean and dry. Yeah. This one here is, um, put it up on the shelf so I can take a peek at it. This is another patchy box. So these are manuals for the machine. And um, this is a parts catalog. And uh, I can't remember now what those things go for. But I'm an old guy, and I like paper. You know, the Internet is great, but, you know, <laughs> my world does not always have service. And, you know, there's just something that's very important about being able to, you know, open something up and look at a picture, you know, and see how it all goes together. Let me get that. I mean, it's just a manual. You guys have seen it. But, uh, um, anyhow, that came with the machine, and uh, it's very important. It's... Uh, I try to take good care of it. It cost, it, it, yeah, they wanted a fortune for it if you have to buy it. But it, it came with the uh, the uh, machine, and I made sure that came, and I take good care of it so it, it's useful. Operator's manual, um, engine manual, saw head manual, <clears throat> um, another saw head manual that I got from the guys at Triad. They take really good care of me, Ben and Dan and Michael. Um, there's also in down in there. There's a manual for the uh, um, uh, Webasto heater. That, that's a beautiful thing. For, you know, you can program it so it warms your machine up in the morning. But um, just like all this stuff, it's fairly complex and not very self-explanatory. And that manual's you know definitely helped me get dialed in on, on how to run it. Make sure it went right. Yeah, so anyhow, moving down to this bottom end here. Um, that's a SWR meter for the, the dreaded CB. Um, I try to keep both of them tuned in. The buncher doesn't get out all that well, but it does all I need, you know, for close range stuff. And then that's a battery box as terminal protector and contact cleaner and a wire brush. I think there's a puller or two in there, too. Yeah, so anyhow. Yeah, like I said, we'll revisit some of that stuff. Um, so, hope you find this one interesting. Um, any questions, feel free to let me know. So, we enjoy doing these. The comments are great. So, uh, thanks a lot. And, uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you.